guys in this video we're going to be taking a look at fixing some of the issues with the mountain specifically the stepping uh, so without further ado let's get into it so to start off with I'm going to show you how you would fix one of these issues if you were using uh, a texture that you got online or somewhere else so if you come down to the sampling tab in the texture which is the displacement texture you can get to by clicking here you can see you've got sampling and you've got filter type eccentricity and size so if you increase the size to something say 15 so you're losing some detail but you're also losing that stepping so if you set it to say something like 8 you are reducing that by quite a bit you're also losing some of the detail so we're just gonna leave that at 1 but that is a good thing to know if you are gonna fix an issue that you're uh, come across from a different texture. So here I am in the Houdini file and if you look very closely turn the grid off. If you look very closely you can actually see that uh, there is indeed some stepping here. That is because in the height field we set the resolution uh, the grid spacing to 2 which is about 2.5 million voxels which sounds like a lot but when you look at it it's really not. So if we increase that value, or sorry, decrease that value to something like 0.5. Okay, so you see we've got 8 million voxels. So everything has to recompute because we are increasing the amount of voxels. So the biggest thing that we're going to be increasing uh, for performance is the height field of road. We need to change uh, the smoothing for the height field of road. So if you go to the advanced tab and you enable post smooth. So once you increase the resolution, as you can see here, these, these little sliding trails, uh, you can't really see that because of how low re the resolution is. But once you hit reset simulation, that's gonna resim uh, all 20 frames. And you're gonna see why we have this enabled in just a moment here. The simulation finished. And as you can see, we've got these lines coming down from the mountain uh, that's simula simulating weathering uh, such as rain and uh, water sliding so if you were to disable this post smooth you can see that it is very harsh uh, way too harsh for my liking and uh, just enabling this post smooth is a great way to reduce that you get a better look at it if you go to the attribute delete and enable and disable this post smooth so I think it's honestly essential for when you're creating a train like this so now if you take a look you can see that we have our mountain set up. Uh, it's looking pretty nice here. Next, what we want to do is we want to just change this mask by feature for the slumping. Um, so the reason that we're going to be changing that is the way that the slumping worked on the low resolution, it doesn't quite work with the high resolution. So I'm going to increase this mask slope angle up to around 60, go around there and minimum slope angle, let's just bring it down about 27, 28. Okay, and this is fine like that. The reason is, is that we don't want sloping on the peaks around there, that's fine, because that's realistically where some snow would uh, stick and stay. So if we bring back the slump, and we clear the mask, you can see that there's quite a bit of snow here, uh, but it looks very flat and kind of boring in my opinion. So there's a feature in the high field slump that I discovered. Uh, it's the granular. So when you first enable it, it's going to look terrible. It's just like white noise. But if you can control it properly, which I found a way to, uh, it can look very nice, like some snow that's been settling on the mountain. So if you set the spread rate to 0.1, and let's up this to about 75. Now I think that looks pretty nice. I think it looks like some snow that's just settled on the mountain here. You can't really see like any pe uh, any valleys, but you can see all the peaks sticking out. The next thing to do is to go to the height field output and make sure that we're selecting the same texture as before, except save that to disk. That's going to render out. Okay, now we're going to go into Blender. And as you can see, the image hasn't changed, but once you hit this reload image here, uh, you should see uh, quite a significant difference. All right, so let's see that. Okay, 
and boom. Now if you zoom in here, you can see that there's not a lot of resolution uh, stepping that you can see. You can see that it's all basically independent of how high you have the resolution in Blender. So that concludes the third video of this tutorial series. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at creating splat maps in Houdini and exporting that out as a texture image to Blender to begin the texturing process in layers.